Right, today we've had a bunch of new things in the lab, uh, new packages and gear that I thought I'd take you through. Okay, so the first one, John, and this is my uh, my son John, I think you've seen him in previous videos, play testing some things for me. So John, do you want to get this one open? You just need to pull it, so you don't need any scissors for it. Um, so this is the internet button, and this one was actually given to me by a friend to try and do something with. Um, perhaps build a robot around it, um, and perhaps build some, yeah, some no, interesting lessons around it. Bit. So if you, that's how you open it, you've got to unscrew that. So. This is kind of a little bit like the ESP or the Node MCU, but it's a bit pricier. You've got a chip in the middle there. You've got a bunch of stuff on the back. John's showing. <laughs> you can look through that, can you? Is that cool? So I think they've covered some of the holes there, which are possibly where uh, some of these pins were already in use, or maybe they're just handy feet. Um, so you've got some I.O. pins on the bottom, you've got a bunch of buttons built in, uh, and I'm not sure, is it a beeper? Um, so it plugs in via USB, it also has Wi-Fi, you can actually program it from, once I think it's set up with a Wi-Fi, from your browser, with a visual programming language based on Blockly, which looks a lot like Scratch. And uh, this one, the idea is it's quite easy for children, and potentially for teachers or for parents to play with too. You set it up with your Wi-Fi. So we'll try and get that set up later and see if we can at least get it connecting with some sensors. Obviously with buttons of its own. And I think there's also a LED ring of its own in there as well. Then we've already got sensors and things to try stuff out. Uh, comes with its own little USB cable as well. So the next thing, I've already had this open and used it in my last video. I've now got myself a lapel mic, so hopefully the lapel mic will mean that the audio on those videos will be much better. I'm using the shotgun mic again for this one, uh, but uh, well, when I've got two of us, I'm not sure the lapel mic's going to make for much. So uh, you'll see this, it's, a, it's an active microphone, so it takes a battery as well, and uh, so far I'm very pleased with the result. It's probably the best microphone result I've had yet. Dad, why do cows... Where my head's going. Ah, that's because this camera is head tracking to make sure your head and my head are in focus. Do you want to use scissors for this one? Yeah. Maybe if you, uh, if I hold it, here we go, go on, get scissors, your fingers and scissors, and you cut through this area up here, cut through there, yeah, that's it, good boy. You got it? Yeah. Go on. Now, I'm expecting, I'm not entirely sure what this one is, but I'm expecting a couple of things, a couple of Kickstarter packages. I'm going to get that out. What's in there then, John? Um, box. A box. If you look at the front of the box, this says CHIP, C-H-I-P. Yes. So uh, this, I got this uh, Kickstarter um, a while ago, so this has just arrived. It's a $9 which in pounds was about, hmm, I'd say, what, five, six pounds, computer. Now, this I bought before the Pi Zero, but I think it's still pretty awesome and pretty cool. It's, I believe it's a little bit more geared with its GPIO at Arduino-like applications. Um, let's just have a look at what we've got inside. Mm -hmm. So I'll get in there with these scissors. And what does it say on the back? Um, Oh, okay, no, just lots of legal. Right, I'm not going to read that. Okay, so we've got what looks like uh, AV, so audio and video. So we've got two audio channels and a video channel coming out the back there from a four pin output. That's kind of interesting. I should be able to connect it to the TV with that. And let's get the. Can I blow up, though? It's not going to blow up. I, I'm not going to make the TV blow up, don't worry. Right, so we've got this out of its box. So there's a little plastic cover etched with the uh, logo down there. Okay, and so there's a little plastic base there, which is nice, so then there's no contact made from the pins below. So you can see you've got what's probably 
the main core under there, uh, what looks like a Wi-Fi section there. You've got GPIO pins here, and a really nice touch is on the GPIO pins, it's got the pin names printed sideways on all of those GPIO connectors. So when it comes to using this for various GPIO uh, purposes, it's all there. And I can see things like mic in, I can see just a number of XIO P1 to P3. Because I think it's another thing with this is the, with the internet button, the pins at the top are labeled, but the pins under here are not. So it's something I'm really quite pleased with the chip actually. I like marked out pins. So there's a little connector here, which I think might be uh, an external power connector. Um, here's obviously the jack that this cable goes into. You've got USB here, probably a reset button there, and that mini USB might be just for power, it might be for programming. So we're gonna get that plugged in at some point and see what we can do. So the final thing we've got in the lamp today, Focusing. The hands are focusing, so the camera's actually tracking your hands, is it? Okay, so the last thing, John, is this. And I've been talking about making ESP robots, <laughs> and I made them from just stuff I already had in stock, because I've got lots of robots in stock. No, they they John, can we come back? So, can we come back? So he couldn't see you because you were under the table? Yeah. Yeah. So, I've been showing people robots I've been making, but the thing is, if you've not got a stock of robots, how do you start from nothing? Uh, so this, uh, I was able to pick up on one of the cheapo websites. This one I think was Banggood. Um, and do you want to open it up, John, and we have a look inside? Everything you need to make a robot. A pair of wheels, motors, and a battery pack. Now, the frustrating thing about the motors is they come with solder yeah. tags and wheels. not... We've got oh, wheels, yeah. yeah. And they're for robots and cars. Yep. And the uh, the thing about these motors is you're going to have to solder the cables on, which is a bit frustrating. I couldn't find a model like this that was solderless. Maybe I have to go around on eBay and find one. Um, and you can there, stack them. There's a power switch, which is nice. Um, there's also some, um, some odometry, so some encoders. And here, a caster wheel for the bottom of the chassis. So you've got here, the chassis. So there's a simple one layer chassis robot. Um, you'd obviously peel off this backing. You've got cutouts for all of the various bits like the encoders there, sensors you want to put up there. Um, so I'm presuming some of these holes are for where we'll actually connect the, uh, the motors. Um, it looks like the motors actually go through these pegs, so they're not, not too many screws. I've seen a few. Um, so there's the cables to attach to the motors, and it looks like you do need soldering for this. Which is frustrating, because they've given us a really nice solderless board, where, uh, and this is nice. So, John, do you want to cut through this for me? Yeah. Yeah, you cut through there nice and carefully. Oh, cut through just below, oh, not quite. <laughs> right, so inside this anti-static bag, we've got a really nice board. Um, and I couldn't yet find this board on its own, only as part of this kit. But I suppose if you're building an ESP-based robot rover from scratch, you're going to want this kit with this board. Um, so yeah, you've there's got... there's two wheels. And there's two wheels. In fact, there's three wheels, but the third wheel is here on this caster. Yeah. Yeah. So this board here, you've got a standard node MCU board, which you've seen before with the ESP8266, mounted on a motor controller. Uh, and I'll see if I can get the ESP off. It's a bit stiff. There's also a big fat power button there. And that's got control for four motors, not just two. Yeah. So that's really nice. Okay, there we go. So under where the ESP was mounted, you can see there's the motor trick chip there, and it's got a little marking down here which shows you which side the antenna of the ESP will end up, so you're not going to end up putting it in the wrong way. All of the I.O. broken out here, and that I.O. is broken out in such a way, first it's perfect for servos, because it's going to be a servo-style connector, an SPI bus connector there, 
There's just a voltage and ground there. The UART connector, one of those FTDI type cables, screw terminals for the motor connector. So even if I wasn't building this robot, this board is nice to have. We'll have to try it out later and see how it really works. So I'll do a video where I build this robot up and make it move. Yeah, yeah, You'll see all of these it. things in the lab in upcoming videos and we'll spend a bit more time with each one of them. I suppose the only real choice is which to do first. They're no. all looking like great fun. This yeah, robot, no, this, the, the uh, hold on. Saw my foot. The camera saw your foot, did it? Aha. Uh -huh. So, oh, hold on. I don't want to leave the wheels out. Won't be able to build a robot without the wheels. Um, and you'll see that in my, uh, at least the videos where I haven't got uh, little helpers, uh, I'll be using the lapel mic instead of the shotgun and we'll see, I think, far better audio with far less background noise. John, do you want to play with bubble wrap and pop the, pop the bubbles? Thank you very much for listening uh, and for watching. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you thought this was fun, please subscribe. If you know someone who loves this kind of electronics and robots kind of thing, share it with them, let them know. Um, you know, that uh, there's gonna be far more of this and as you can see, we're gonna play with all of these goodies um, throughout, so. Okay, good night. Goodbye. I'm just pulling the bubble up.